Live from downtown Detroit, home of WDIV and Click on Detroit, Local 4 News at 6 starts now. An impossible decision. Michigan Medicine takes a 14-year-old boy off life support after his family's legal efforts are thrown out on a technicality. Tonight, that family is outraged and heartbroken. Rod. Out here on the picket line, they're girding for a longer strike, and yet new developments this morning show us that maybe the GMUAW strike is on the doorstep of a deal. And shocking videos tonight as fights break out in the hallways of a Macomb County high school. And for students there, this is becoming the new normal. In total, four disturbing videos surfacing out of Chippewa Valley High School in Clinton Township, all showing fights between groups of students filling school hallways and basketball courts. We can't even show you the unblurred video, and not just because they're minors, but because it's too violent. Priya Mann spoke to a local mother who said this is not a new problem there, and lately it's getting worse. These videos are disturbing. In many cases, a large group of students are recording these fights inside the school, and even with a police presence, parents say they don't feel safe sending their kids here. So helpless, and they have like four kids jumping on top of them and everybody cheering them on. It's horrible. Snapchat video shows students brawling and throwing punches in hallways and even on the basketball court at Chippewa Valley High School. Something has to be done. You know, these kids think that this is okay. And then again, they're posting them. They're proud of it. They're cheering each other on and Again, like, I don't feel like this is a safe place to send my son anymore. In a few videos, adults and liaison officers are trying to break up the fights. It's like the kids are running the school. Chippewa Valley School Superintendent Ron Roberts called the fights isolated incidents and says only a few students in the 10th grade were involved. They're very short videos that just show a, a snippet and we, we have adults um, in our in our buildings, in our hallways. Superintendent Roberts says a fight started two weeks ago after a football game and led to another fight. Despite being disturbed by these videos, he says the district will not be increasing its police presence and says that between hall monitors, teachers and officers, there are enough adults around to keep students safe. I think at this point in time, we just need to um, heighten awareness um, because this is this is not what we will we want to have continue. As parents, we send our kids to school thinking this is a safe place. And now I'm really second guessing that. Like, is my kid safe right now? Now, now following these fights, the superintendent says a few students were arrested and since then two have been expelled. Three others have been suspended and some others could also be charged. Tonight, the district did send parents a letter urging them to have some conversations with their kids. We have the full letter up on clickondetroit.com. Reporting live, I'm Priya Mann, Local 4. Okay, Priya, thanks. The family of 14 year old Bobby Reyes has been fighting for weeks to keep him on life support after a severe asthma attack, but today they had to give up that fight. That's right. Bobby's family had filed a restraining order to keep him on life support. A Washtenaw County judge couldn't rule in the case because it was filed in the wrong court. Today, Mott Children's Hospital declared Bobby brain dead for a second time and took him off life support. Crosses, crosses he held in his hands. And some of his hair. That's what I'm leaving with. My heart's broke. I'll never be the same. The hospital says this was a difficult decision, but under Michigan law, a patient declared brain dead must be taken off life support. After a full month on the picket lines, fresh developments tonight in the United Auto Workers strike against General Motors. Mary Barra made a second appearance at the negotiating table today, and the UAW summoned local leadership to Detroit, leaving many to believe an end is in sight for the now month-long strike. But there are some who have a less optimistic outlook. Local 4 Business Editor Rod Maloney is live tonight with a realistic view of today's events. Rod? 
No doubt about it. We have to remain cautious here because there are a number of things to consider. One, there is no tentative agreement. Two, that that uh, they are still talking up here is a good sign, but they've not gone to marathon talks. And then when you bring the subcommittees, the chair people and the uh, the local presidents to town without that tentative agreement, uh, it gets really sort of strange as to why and what is up. And so there are a lot of people who are a little suspicious about what's really going on here. The company's lost about a billion dollars. The rank and file about a quarter of a billion in wages. Mary Barra clearly wants to end this strike. But on the picket line, members like Greg, and he wouldn't give us his last name, thinks Barra didn't go to the negotiating table on her own. She's in trouble with the investors because if they're not making money at GM, investors aren't happy. I mean, that's the way I look at it. UAW Local 22 electrician Paul Raditz wants to be optimistic but agrees with Greg's assessment. That tells me that GM wants to get it done. Uh, her own negotiators couldn't get it done, so she has to come in and do it herself because I'm sure she's really getting uh, the riot act from the stockholders. When it comes to this letter sent last night to UAW local presidents and chairpersons, there are a number of ways to look at it. Former GM negotiator Art Schwartz thinks it could be more of a contract spitballing session. They could uh, be close but off on some issues and they want to find out if, they, if the uh, chairman and presidents think they can sell what they've got so far to the membership. Schwartz also worries the meeting might not even get to that point and a disappointed leadership might have to keep membership on the picket line longer. It's morale building also. They kind of go in and tell them where they're at at least and uh, kind of buck up the spirits because they're gonna, if they go back to the picket line, they've got to at least have something to tell the people. That, of course, is the scenario that is most worrisome because if, in fact, they don't get an agreement with General Motors, do they go back to the table? Do they take it to Ford? That's always been an option. To know it's never been done before. And so the other thing that we haven't seen is marathon talks, overnight talks that go to push the ball over the goal line. And we're looking to see if tonight, perhaps, that can happen to give us a better feeling for where all of this is headed. Back to you. Yeah, Rod, as we hear how outspoken workers are today, I'm wondering, are they saying anything about whether they think this strike was worth it at this point? Well, a lot of them are saying that, you know, they're going to lose money, especially the older workers are saying they're going to lose money. But we had a number of them say to us today, if they can get help for the temporary workers to get them in line for a full-time job, um, they feel like this would have been worth it. Yeah. All right, Rod, we'll stay on top of it. Thank you. If you head to our website, click on Detroit.com, we have a detailed timeline of every event in this now month long process. You can find that at click on Detroit.com slash strike timeline, or you can find a link on the home page. Now let's send things over to Ben with a check of the weather today. Jason, we've got uh, showers in the area for some spots. In fact, we got a healthy thunderstorm right now rolling through parts of St. Clair County. You can see this was sort of a just an area that we were watching that's now started to develop a little line here along 69. So that's going to be sweeping through Marysville and Port Huron on its way out to the lakeshore. A lot of lightning with this, but again, no hail, nothing severe expected, but expect to see some downpours and lightning strikes at least for about the next 20 minutes plus as that makes its way to the lake. We've got three weather stories we're watching rain, wind and cold here over the next several days. Highest chances of rain are coming tonight. We'll look at the timing on that strong wind gust on Wednesday. We'll look at the speeds we're expecting for the second half of the day. We could see frost again this week. Find out where the temperatures are going before a warmer weekend. All coming up in a few minutes, guys. All right, Ben, an update now to a story we told you about yesterday. A diesel spill in Bear Creek in the city of Warren. That's right, and today we got an update from the Macomb County Public Works Office. And as Nick Monticelli reports, even though there are still questions, we're also getting some answers. What happened in the beginning? Ahmad Alzin works at the VP station on Mound just north of 696. Bear Creek runs behind it. And here is where the diesel spill was found. But that was seven months ago. Booms and curtains were put in to contain the spill, and experts were brought in to pinpoint where it was coming from. The assumption was a leaking diesel tank underground, but they all checked out. So now the Macomb County Public Works Office is thinking the diesel is very old and may have come from an old unused tank and could have been here for a while. And that was an important thing to find 
because if you'd be able to see that it's brand new diesel that's coming out here, obviously you've got a situation where perhaps one of the tanks was leaking or there was a spill or something. This really is not the case. This was an, this is an old product. So here's the challenging and even frustrating part of this story though. Despite all of the testing and everything they've done here, they still don't have an exact cause in all this. But those in charge say at this point, it doesn't matter. It's no matter anymore. We want it to be clean and we want everything to be everybody happy. And we want a clean water. If they haven't been able to definitively say thus far, I'm not quite sure what else you could really do. So, you know, it might be better, but I'm not sure that it would change the outcome as far as what our fix is going to be. And that fix will cost half a million dollars, tearing up this embankment, putting in retaining walls, testing stations and more to prevent any more of the old diesel from getting in, which is why it would still be nice to know exactly where it came from in the first place. 100%. Every day was people was working here. I'm thinking, oh, this is going to happen. This is what this, this was going to be. In Warren, Nick Monticelli, Local 4. And gas station owners will get some assistance paying for that half million dollar repair job from a state run insurance program funded by a small tax on gasoline. All right, time now for a check of the national stories you'll see ahead at 630 on NBC Nightly News. Lester Holt joins us live from New York City with a preview. Hi, Lester. Hey, Jason and Kim. Coming up, the baffling murder mystery, an American prosecutor gunned down on a Pacific island. We'll bring you the latest from there. Plus, what it's like inside the prison where actress Felicity Huffman is now serving time. And Huffman is the first parent locked up in the college cheating scandal, right? Yeah, she is, and her life behind bars obviously is going to be a bit different than what she's used to. We're going to tell you a little more about the routine there and what she'll face uh, when we see you coming up here on Nightly News. All right, we'll see that in about 20 minutes. Thanks, Lester. Still ahead on Local 4 News at 6, new information about that Taco Bell beef recall impacting restaurants all over the country. Yeah, what Taco Bell says was inside the beef and why the restaurants still might not be safe. Plus, it's the silent killer, why this time of the year puts families at higher risk of carbon monoxide poisoning and how you can keep yourself and your loved ones safe. But first, here's what Dr. Frank McGeorge is working on for 11. It's a lingering problem that plagues many breast cancer survivors. Painful swelling that makes it difficult to do everyday things. It's probably the most neglected medical condition. But this local doctor is determined to help change that. It's just amazing that they're out there finding these new techniques. Oh, I can play with the grandkids, I can pick them up. I'm Dr. Frank McGeorge. I'll show you the procedure that's offering patients new hope tonight at 11. I don't take it lightly when you want to share your story. I hold people accountable, stand up for others, stop the bullying, and hopefully make positive change. 